Hey, you wanna go for a ride? Are you sure? Get in the car. Let's go for a ride. Hey. Go for a ride? Hey. <laughs> What do you got there, Ray? What are, we're talking about, we're over at Ray's now, home shop, and uh, here's one, Ray. Ray's the man, arcade games and drag racing, Mopars nonetheless. Triple win in my book. Keep it up. Yeah, really? Mopars? Where'd that guy oh, come man, from? Oh man, anything is good, but yeah, I do have partiality to that. Where'd that, who was that? But I like it all, man. Chevy, Ford, I don't really care. That's fine. I don't know. It who, all has a place in my book. I don't know who. I think that was. I think that might have been flesh wound. I'm not sure. Oh. Okay. Here's Oops. a here's a question from from uh, Gosel Videos. Is Ray removing the solder from the hardwired links to replace them with a switch bank? I'm sorry, as, as Ray is removing the solder from the hardwired links to replace them with a switch bank, that must have been when you were doing that uh, Adams Family um, MPU. You were putting the switch bank in there, remember that? Switch. We, we were upstairs, uh, you were taking the jumpers, oh, yeah, the right. jumpers out, you remember that? Yeah. Um, he uses copper braid. Yeah. I guess that's your solder sucker, the copper well, braid. Well, in the field it is. And I didn't move my. That's your. That's your. Sucker. Your field solder suckers. Copper. Yeah. Copper braids. Yeah, solder didn't, sucker. Didn't move my station over to over at work yet. Um, every so often, he does something to the solder tip to improve the heat transfer from solder iron, solder iron tip to the braid, which results in a lot of smoke. What's he doing? I don't think he's tinning the tip. Is he putting flux on the tip? Yes. If so, which flux does he use? Um, I bought it from Technotool, and it's it's made by GC Electronics. Um, I'd have to look at what what it is because they make like so many different kinds. It's made to use with 604010 solder now. So. 604010 solder flux. Yeah, you you can get it specific. Also, um, I find any kind works. This here is Oatly. You can get this. This is um, what it says: the tinning flux for use with lead-free solder. Uh, lead-free solder is mostly what you're going to get nowadays because the EPA won't allow you to to use lead solder. Okay. Uh, uh, this is something you get at Lowe's, Home Depot. This works fine. All right. That other stuff you've seen though, that was specially for electronic work. But you know what? I find this works as well. I I bought it because I was getting tools, so I just bought it. So you have no real preference for no, flux? No, I don't. I like this. All of it's about the same. Yeah, this stuff works great. Okay. All you're using it for is to improve the heat transfer of the soldering iron. Uh, I noticed that using this, using this with the braid, keeps the heat low and the solder pull maximum. Without this, you have to have too much heat on the board for too long, even with the braid. Okay. So that this enhances the pro, pro, uh, procedure. That's all. Okay, Mr. Silver Ball Mania, which I kind of wonder if that's any relation to Silver Ball Mania. I don't know. Because Silver Ball Mania is Bill. is Billy, but he didn't identify himself as Billy, so I don't know if this is Billy or not. But uh, in reference to EM pins, tech tips. I use simple green to clean everything, reels, stepper units, coil sleeves, all plastic posts, etc. I like your tip on using tweezers to help on cleaning points, great tip. I also have a vibrating polisher that I put all the screws, chrome parts in and let run 12 hours. Uh, I'm bringing that up because we're doing playfield parts, vibrating tumbler, do you got one of them? Mm -hmm. Talk about it. What kind of shop is this, Ray? It's a cluster mess. No, man, it's organized. It's a disaster. It's right. Is this trash? Yeah. What is that? Valley spinner? Parts tumbler. Oh, has, there's one. It has two buckets. I have different shine media. Okay. The bottom bucket has um, 
the green stuff in the light. Remember that? Yeah, the green stuff. Yeah, that's for like taking rust off stuff. Um, you know, it works all right. This is your uh, walnut shell type stuff or whatever it's called. I think that's actually what it is. Walnut shells? I think. It's like a... Oh, yeah. I think. I don't know. Uh, Eastwood, I buy it from. Yeah, I have one. I know you change these too. containers, and this is your green stuff. You add water in That's this. The, uh, aggressive. Yes, it is. That's plastic with a, a grit mixed into it. That's for your rust removal, and yeah. then the seconds for your polish. It will still leave pitted, rusty, ugly metal, um, but it'll clean all the bulk rust off. And what's this? A Turbo 400 or a Turbo 350? No, man. Oh, it's a Mopar. 727. Junk. Yeah. Torque flight. That's correct. So you didn't think I knew I, I knew that when you said that was 727. Yeah, I did. You, I surprised you there, didn't I? They're dating you, so your knowledge. Slip and slide? Yeah. No, they're, <laughs> they're not. These these are about 3,000 each. I don't think there's any car guys parts. left, Ray. No car guys. These I built for racing, and they'll, they'll probably stand up to about 1,000 horse, and then that's about all they'll take. They'll fall apart with regularity. Okay, that's all good. What's that tumbler do? I mean, we know what it, what it does. It shakes. And you leave it what on for hours do, and hours. You want to get some of this to enhance what that does. Flitz yes. Tumbler Media Additive. This does great things. Neat. What's it do? Uh, if you just use this by itself, this stuff has a coating on it. Yeah, yeah. It's not just walnut shells or whatever they make this media out of. It's... It's got a powder, a polishing powder with it, but it works slow. I found this stuff enhances it, and it will do this type of stuff. These actually looked rusty. They're aluminum of some kind or steel. Those are uh, those are fifty-year-old, sixty-year-old yeah, play field posts. Yeah, two-piece metal posts. The ring goes in there, and that's what a post is. Well, that looks um, pretty pretty extraordinary. Yeah, these are all very ugly. Um, I, I do it more than 12. I do this, I leave this run for a day okay. or two with the flits in it. And if you don't, you'll get patchiness. In fact, even still, you'll see some patchiness right right there. If you see that little bit of patchiness oh, there. Yeah, you're asking a lot now. Yeah, but you know what I'm getting yeah, at. Sure. It's worse if you go less. Right, right, right. But the, there are literally probably 80 posts to this game. Well, that's a bunch of shiny stuff in there, right? No. To do flat metal like this, these are the lane guides uh, supposedly in this thing. Yeah, yeah. To do this, you don't use that. No. You must do this by, by hand, hand with a polisher, and it's a two step process. Um, yeah, coarse and fine. Yes. Um, so, you know. The, the, and you can do that with the buffing wheel we have over at the. Yeah. yeah you got, you got the same setup. thing here, yeah. Yeah, it's a handy little thing, you know. You can do metal parts and screws that way. Um, or you can just simply uh, buy new, which is what I opted to do with this because I didn't really feel like doing it. Yeah, I hear you. Some of it's actually broke up. <clears throat> I mean, this was actually cracked. Sure. So new one. you buy the new one. Um, I get two of each, you know, I'll have an extra. And this is brand new, it just needs the preserved. Or, yeah, and this is all buggered up. And then, of course, I got another one of these because the one on the. Uh, the apron is pitted and rusty, and I don't feel like polishing it, so I got a new one. And I also got a new one of these. And you take that, and you take that, and yeah. you put new ones on. Yeah, you know, some stuff I'll polish, some I won't. They don't make these, so you got to do them. Right. These little things they make, why not take advantage of sure. them? Sure. Save your time. Well, you know, Ray, you're not going to believe this, but this camera is also out of film. Oh. So, uh... And I have a rubber kit. So, yeah, oh boy. <laughs> um, I'm going to cut here, Ray. We'll be back... I'm gonna I'm gonna cut and we'll be back very shortly. Okay. Okay, Ray, I'm back. I cleared the camera. Too much film? Uh, that's two full cameras. You know what that means? It means you went too long. Yeah, it means we went long again, and I'm gonna be I don't know reviewing oh, all that crap too much editing. until three in the morning. Well, don't use it all. Well, uh, yeah, that, I, it all. yeah. Oh, I forgot. I got to look at all that. Anyway, delete it. Delete it all. No. no. Joe A has sent you a message. Hi guys, just got caught up after discovering these videos a week ago. 
I am new to pinball. I actually don't own one yet, but have always loved them. But I'm learning all I can in the meantime, hoping to get a TZ somewhere down the line. Just wanted to say, keep up the great work. These videos are really enjoyable, and I learn something new every time. Uh, that's just the first half of it, Ray. So we're making this video for Joe A. That's kind of neat, Mike. Yeah. I like it. I'm glad it benefits people. In high I just assume everybody knows this stuff. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, they don't. In high school, I spent a lot of time hanging around a car shop. Oh, it's another car guy. Listening to people swap stories, share tips, and work on each other's cars. And also fix the horrible work from the other guys. We know who he's referring to there. Uh, your vids take me right back to that fun time. I hope you make a hundred more. I'll be watching. A hundred more, Ray. Yeah. Tech, tech tips number 120. Oh my god. Uh, P.S. I've only ever owned one pin. It was a cocktail table called Euro, 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 Eros? E-R-O-S? Eros 1? Eros, yeah. You familiar with that? Mm-hmm. Um, it had been so badly botched tin foil on the fuses, for example. Do you know what it is, Mike? That I it was it one of them allied things? Allied leisure? It was one of their first ones. Oh my god. Right, that's correct. Um, so badly botched that I had to give up on it. Well, I, we don't hold that against you. So I can't agree more with your attitude of wanting to fix it right for the love of the hobby. Not just to move it on down the road. So says Joe. Thanks for the message, Joe. Love of the hobby. Yeah. I loved this at one point, Ray, and it wasn't recently. Was it three years ago? <laughs> yeah. It was about when I started with you all gung-ho to play with this crap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the way it is with everything. You get into a career or hobby and it gets old. And then you just have to find some fun somewhere. Speaking of old, what kind of pen is this? Oh my lord. We've we've shown this thing before. Yeah, you have. It's it's a, the finishing assembly on the top of the play field of the Kings and Queens uh, Gottlieb made in 1962. So you took everything off of the top side. Everything off. Everything off. And uh, hand polished. You can't tumble stuff like this to get this type of sh quality. This is a 1962 piece. Hand polished stuff. You know this goes here. And, and then in these, of course, I'm putting back on. I'm gonna replace. The nails that go here. The, yeah. There's a place for four, but the factory only ever used two. I'm going to put four. Okay. You know, because they always come loose. Um, yeah, and then I'm going to start from the top and come down. You see, you put the, um, that's a play field part we've never discussed before. What is that, Ray? It's a dead bumper. A dead bumper. Yeah, a dead bumper looks like this. The body looks the same, but it's not. And the skirt looks the same, but it's not. But it's not. Um, this is a different color of a live bumper. That's a pop skirt. bumper, yeah. Yeah, and then you can see where your your metal ring comes down. Through. Yeah, the difference between the de uh, being the dead bumper doesn't have the holes for the ring. That's correct. And because there is no, it's it's dead. It doesn't have this kick function. It just gives you a score. Your house is beeping. Uh, that's the well, yes. Anyway, that's the difference between them. You can't use the ring diameter is the same, but. There's no additional holes there, so if you use one of them here, it's going to look kind of weird. Yeah, you'll see holes. But anyway, yeah, that's what that is, and um, I'm just building on down, you know. Dead bumper is pretty much, I'm going to say it's strictly an EM thing. I, I'm, I don't think it, it, it isn't, because I can, yeah, I, can solid I can name, I can name uh, Meteor. Meteor? Mm -hmm. um, that's a stern, right? Meteor, right. stern mm -hmm. meteor. Mm -hmm. Up at the top, there's a dead, there's a dead bumper on that yeah. thing. Yeah, Dracula had a dead bumper. Um, that place where I played in the um, league, it had a lot of games with dead bumpers, but yeah, that's because they didn't and work. And Bally's, I think um, Maple Deluxe has one. I'm going to get Centaur, some. I'm going to get some uh, flack over that. No, Centaur does not have any dead bumpers. Um, the, one of them Bally's, um, Fathom. One of them has a dead bumper. A lot of Bally's have dead. Primarily bumpers. an EM thing, though. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It scores, um, but it doesn't do anything else. It holds a light. Right. That's all. And this was actually 1962. They actually had wedge base. Oh yeah, yeah. And I don't know why they ever went away from it. Yeah, they went to them screwy. So that takes a 555. Yes, it does. Get out of here. Yeah. Okay. Although back in this day, it was not called a 555. Different number. It was a 255. Same, you know, same thing. Though. Same thing. But you can put a 555 in the same voltage. 
but yeah, it's uh, and of course when you do a dead bumper cap, your cap gets smaller. These are all brand new reproduction hot stamp caps from PBR. Yeah, and when your dead bumper cap gets different, and it actually uh, has a little ridge in here, and it, it just snaps on. Um, the Stern Dracula had a had a dead bumper. Yeah, it did. I at said the it. very top. Yeah. Did you say that? Yeah. I'm tired. Yeah. I wasn't listening. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah. Some people listen to your tech videos, Ray. I apparently do not. And of course, this is your bolt on, but. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just hold the camera. I don't. <laughs> You're at ground zero. I'll, I'll you, listen you to it later when I'm trying to decide what to edit out. Um, you're at ground zero. You're allowed to fall asleep. Yeah. yeah. I'm tuning out. Everybody, thanks for tuning in. I'm tuning out. At any rate, uh, I'm, I'm, you took everything off of this playfield. Can you stab yourself waxing a playfield? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, this was machine uh, polished first with number two McGuire's okay. and a jitterbug with 400 sandpaper. Really? Yeah. Uh, what's yeah? You m must keep it wet though, or you'll take paint off. Okay. What was wrong with this was it all started when I started, uh, and I wasn't going to take most of this apart because I was just going to sort of do a uh, spot. Yeah, because I don't know that Gary wanted all that. And yeah, he expected. He, but you know what? Yeah, he I wasn't. Something I wanted to do it right. I didn't want to leave this go. I, everything else is nice. New glass, uh, the artwork on the cabinet and such. I didn't want to. The playfield had potential. Now. What somebody did with this playfield years ago was they took it apart. And they varnished it, didn't yes. they? Yes. And the varnish yellowed and it started getting weird. So when I went to clean it and polish it, wax it, I, I was getting varnish smear and it just went all the way. I destroyed it. I, I just totally wrecked it. Huh. I mean, I, I, I didn't even think I was going to be able to recover from it, to tell you the truth. So I had to use a jitterbug and 400 wet with number two Meguiar's, which is called Fine Cut Cleaner, which is like a polishing compound. Okay. And that took most of it off. And then I had to hand polish the rest with rubbing compound. And that took it down to this. And then the final wax on this is number five Meguiar's, I believe it is, or seven. I think, I think it's five. It's um, cleaner wax, and that is a very thick automotive wax for car finishes. Okay. Um, I, I don't know about um, these people that like this. What are these men? What? Are they? Yeah, mill wax, mill wax. Or, or Novus. Um, I don't know about that. I, I've never used it. I'm a car guy. I like McGuire's because I know what it does and I know the finish. Uh, those things are coin op waxes. And anything to do with a coin op finish, I'm not sure I'm, I'm sold on it. I uh, don't know. I've used Novus on um, plastics, but I'm going to compare the Novus plastic stuff to my Meguiar's plastic, and there's no, no comparison. I wouldn't even use the Novus stuff. Um, if, if you think your products that you're using now, Millwax and Novus, are good, try Meguiar's. It's going to blow away the result. Um, I like the turtle wax green stuff. I use that all I over. I was almost going to come over and get it. <laughs> I use turtle wax red, which is actually more coarse. Okay. And the only reason I used it is because I knew what I had to get off. And you got to be careful because as you're doing this, you want to watch underneath the dull smear yeah, that you you're start not taking, taking paint. paint. Um, you can see certain places right here. See yeah. a little bit. The, uh, you can see where I leaned on it and started taking paint down to the, the primer. Well, you know, this play field, you know, you know, the afterthought is, as far as you took this apart, Ray, it should have gone up to Felix and had him had him do it because it's still got it's still got some pretty signi yeah, pretty yeah. significant wear. Uh, not that, I mean that's not significant for the age of the machine. Right. And you know, well, we know the customer involved here, and he's not looking for. Uh, you're actually going above and beyond really what he wanted in the first place. This took five hours. Yeah. To do what you see here, because if you would have seen this beforehand, it looked mostly like that. Yeah. <laughs> Only not dirty, just varnished. Well, it's going to turn out nicer than he expected, and probably nicer than he intended. Well, yeah. I mean, uh, 
But that being said, it's uh, from what I understand, this is one of the one of the more desirable Very of these. Very collectible. It's probably the most collectible one of these, in a lot of people's opinions. Um, it's a steel post machine, and that's what these are. Yeah. They're two piece steel, um, and there's a lot of them on the game. I mean, you can see there's two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen is just here, and then there's two more here, one more there, and then you didn't even get down to the yeah, it's a lot of steel posts. Of course, there's not much going on here as far as the post goes. Um, and you can see how old it is. And you can see where somebody varnished it and take the flipper bats off because yeah. they didn't get under it. Um, if they didn't varnish this, this would be what it would look like. Yeah. And that's what's here. They didn't varnish here either. You can see where they stopped. Well, when you do varnish on wood, it soaks into the wood. Um, and a game like this was just paint on wood without varnish. They may have put a protective coating on it, but usually not. Um, but then when somebody comes along and tries to tune up a game and they varnish it, that will actually stain the wood darker. Sure. Wood does that, you know, so you can't get that out no matter what you do unless you sand down to the next layer of wood. Um, and it's not practical. Yeah, so, it's a mixed bag there. Yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, who was that uh, Who was that guy? Uh, remember that pin we had? What was that pin? Oh, it was, um, it was that Guns N' Roses pin we had. Right. Um, the first one. Yeah. Um, what was the name of that guy? I can't remember. He's fairly famous for doing this. He was an operator, and um, every game that came in, he varnished, he, he verithane the, the cabinets. Oh, yeah. And Pinball Pete. Pinball Pete, that's who it was. And, um, y you know, there's, there's mixed opinions on it. I thought the cabinet looked great. Yeah, me too. Because um, you could hit it with a ball-peen hammer and it wouldn't leave a dent. It was very durable. But it also yellowed and there was no more white. There was no more white in the artwork. All the, all the white was yellow. Um, it can't be controlled. But, varnish and uh, certain stains like that will yellow clear. But so be it. I, I really wasn't against it. I thought it was, you know, uh, it was kind of... Looks good for the first. Yeah, for for the age of a for the age of a routed machine, it it really it it protected the cabinet. Um, yeah, well, whatever. You can have your opinion on that. Um, whatever. I generally didn't go any further than this with this because uh, it gives it some of the original wear. Yeah. And I think Gary was looking for that. It's okay. Um, he didn't want me to send the play field away at my discretion, is what he said, but. I looked at it and generally I wouldn't. Uh... Now, once you get the plastics and everything back on there, and of course you got everything shined up so much that uh, it'll be it'll be okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think he wanted a fifteen thousand dollar kings and queens. No, no. Um, even even being said, this has probably got a value of close to five thousand. Because I did one for Ken, and it was appraised at over four. Yeah. And it was rough. Uh, nice original, but I don't know. Yeah, I saw that machine. It all, was a piece of junk. It's all a taste thing, you know. Some people consider what you said is junk as better than this because it's not been touched. Whatever. To me, it, that thing was I would rough. want it in my house. That thing looked like it had been outside for a month. Well, to have an original cabinet finish on a machine that doesn't do any anybody any good looking at it, um, why would you want I, to have a house full of original stuff like that that looks worn out? That that doesn't no, that, that don't impress me much. Me, no, no, everybody has an opinion. People want that. There are collectors. Now the other want, end of the day, want this and anymore. we've talked about this before. There was that Captain Fantastic with, with less than three thousand plays. Okay, I'm impressed by that. Yeah, you know that was very that's, nice. That's shape. a you know in car. I guess in the car world they call that a survivor. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah. But just because you got some old that's decrepit looking and, and it you, didn't survive. Yeah, that's that's not a survivor. That's yeah. just old and decrepit. It, it, yeah. yeah. And, um, like this was when it came in. This was old and decrepit looking. <laughs> yeah, it was. I think I was here the day Bill unloaded this from the truck. Yeah. And I said, "What the hell is that junk?" <laughs> <laughs> he was so proud of it. <laughs> oh boy. Well, like I said, everybody has their own thing about it. It, it makes it a diverse hobby, <laughs> really. All right, Ray. You got any other playfield parts you want to talk about this week? Um. No, being this is an EM, you know, I 
Yeah, there ain't too much to the way of play field parts. It's got posts, it's got rubber. We talked yeah, about rubber. Put these back on. It's got um, uh, those things serve as sandpaper to everything underneath. Ray, don't put those back I'm on. I'm going to put them back on. Ray, why would you put those back on? I don't know. I just All they do I is have them. The only thing they do is sand the, they sand the play field. Uh, you God, can see the Godley, Godlieb even admitted that they're bad. Do not put those back All on. Right, I won't put them Here's a playfield part. Um, they had they had these little skirts underneath it. Now yes. now some of them are actually like uh, mylar glued on. Yeah. Those are okay. Because they don't skid. Right. But the ones these, that the ones that just float skid. there, mm -hmm. um, dirt gets underneath them. Um, the pop bumper actuates and it sands right through your paint. Yep. And that is not dirt. That is. So do not put those back on. All right. That was no. That was the tech tip. I wasn't telling you. I was telling everybody oh. else. All right. Um, feel free to argue. If you do, you're wrong. Uh, <laughs> well, there you go. But you can comment on there it because I can't respond to your comment. I can delete oh. it, but I can't respond. What other what other playfield parts you got over there, Ray? Anything? No, it you, you tumbled all the nuts and bolts. It's got nuts and bolts. It's got flathead screws. I'm I'm assuming you're putting the flathead screws back in. Yeah, um, they're all polished. You tumbled them. Um, you know, when I first started doing the shop jobs in the shop, Ray, I, I was doing that. I was tumbling all the hardware you know, and, talking about a, and, and stuff like that. I don't do it anymore. I just put it in there. a machine that has no plastics. Th this is it. These are all, that's all that goes on this. <laughs> this is a Playfield plastic set. Yeah. It's, it's not, they don't make it. Very much to it. No. no. <laughs> this thing's all posts and lane guides. Um. It does take a bunch of lane guides. Quite a bit. Oh my lord. Lane guides. You ordered them specifically for this game, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, and then you flip the back, you know. PBR again. Yeah. These are not the ones that go on. Ballad he made Williams. these special. You can see how thick they are. Yeah, they're different. Oh, yeah, and they're rounded corners. Nice. Not square. Um, yeah, they're, they're for these old games. That's neat. Yeah. He makes them in different colors, and it helps with the project. Because other than that, you'd have to put on the dull, broken, cracked, old originals, which somebody over tightened the screws on and cracked the tops off. Yeah. Um, do you like to? Do you put um, washers on them when you put them on? Uh, or yeah. did, did the factory put washers yeah, on them? Yeah, the factory used the washer head. Oh, the washer head screws. Yes, okay. What goes on them? Because if you don't use that, you will break them again. No, you can see in here is washer head screws that go on all of them there's there's that's what goes on all of them these do not these go on certain other parts of the machine but yeah no no okay yeah to answer your question yeah and then i had this apart down here for the uh, ball trough that's all cleaned up i glass beaded all this, this thing got multi-ball yes does it really no it doesn't yeah does it really yeah you can launch five balls out oh it's got the manual yeah you're not supposed to, though. No, you were supposed no, you're to. Not. No. But you know, I think all this that, is... that was what Ron Ron uh, Ron commented. He said he said he likes to just launch them all out. He said he said all the EMs have multi ball. You just launch them all out. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. I I almost agree with that, Ray. You know, of all the things I don't like to do, and there's a lot of things I don't like to do, playing this game would be would rank in the middle somewhere. <laughs> Wow, oh. these things are. This and the good. This is like up there with them gun games that we're working on. Same thing. Terribly boring. Why would somebody want it? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't get it. Everybody has their own thing, man. I like torque flights. Yeah, Mopar. Hey, I, I know my way around Turbo 400s and C6s also. My brother-in-law had a um, little red Express. Yeah. You know you're that? Mm -hmm. that? Thing was a rocket. Yeah, well, that was a small block truck. They were three sixties. What year was it? Seventy seven? Uh, I don't rem I don't remember. They only made that truck a couple years. Two years, I think. Two two years. It was neat. Yeah. It, it it ran. Yeah. I mean for a truck in that era. Pretty fast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they had special heads and cam and so forth, manifold and everything. Mopar, junk. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of agree with with the horsepower you can get per money spent on Chevy or well no mostly Chevy you, you can spend 
the same amount of money on a Chevrolet big block as a Chrysler, and that's going to go faster for less. There was just more. I don't know if anybody cares about that anymore, Ray. No, they don't even know what a big block ship. What? What big what? <laughs> Drag strip? Are they? Are there any of those left? I mean, that's hey, like a, you know what? it's like a drive-in movie. When I went to the fleas, Rick, my friend, told me that I got to catch you up on some tracks. There was two of them closed. South Mountain Dragway and Bowling Springs is closed. Never heard of either of them. It's an eighth mile and um, seventy-five eighty in Monrovia, Maryland. Quarter miles closed. That's 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 sad. Oh yeah. We have Maple Grove Raceway. What do you think of Maple Grove Raceway, Ray? It's close. It's close? Sure. Okay. Is that, is that all you got to, good to say about it? It's okay. All right. That's, that's, the, that's the local one. I think it might still be there. Yeah. I, I don't think the future of most of them things are going to stay. I mean, if you get a flat tire there, they got nobody there to fix it. Yeah, the downturn is coming. Uh, the land they take <clears> up. And uh, the noise around the community, people object to it, and it travels for a quarter to two miles. You can yeah, and probably insurance is ridiculous. Insurance, yeah. See, there's too much against them. That's why the other tracks have closed, you know, that I just mentioned. And there's probably going to be more following because near populated areas, you know, like that track's near Reading, and then, of course, Adco's in populated area, Jersey, and... You know, English Town is in a very populated area of that part of Jersey. I mean, there's just there's no room for them. You know, so you might be a redneck if you know um, uh, the Buck. You ever been to the Buck? Yeah. <laughs> I never been. No, I haven't. I go and buy it. Okay. It's a tractor pull. Place. It's tractor pulls. And I guess they have mud things. Yeah, tractor pulls, mud runs, mud. and a couple times a year demo derbies. Yeah, the Buck is down south of Lancaster. Yeah. That's actually the name of the town, Buck. Mm-hmm. Yeah. See you no, at I the Buck. Buy, I go, yeah, I'm going by. That's been here for years. I was never into the dirt thing. You know, I like okay. the pavement. Well, you know, if, if you ever went to a tractor pull, I think you would probably appreciate it. Because they, they get some power, horsepower in them things. I went to a farm show in Harrisburg. They had indoor tractor pulls. Okay. Them guys are nuts. <laughs> they, they, had are. Unlimited, they had an unlimited class. Yeah, some of them things are, they look like tractors and they got six engines hooked yeah, crank to crank. A, a couple of them did have six engines and they sort of stack them like one's here, one's up higher. Oh, they got all kinds of different configurations. It's pretty neat. And they're blown fuel. Uh, they're blown serious. Nitro fuel. Big money. Yeah, they. I don't know. Silly they, money. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they they just have to pull a sled with a weight that comes up, and yeah. then as far as they pull is what they get graded as. Uh, All right, Ray. Well, I don't know if we covered <laughs> any play field parts, but we we, we did some. We managed yeah. to yip yap for for two full camera fulls with it full of film or whatever this thing takes digital film. Digital. And I got plenty to look at, so yeah. That's no, that looks looks like right looks like junk to me. Over the store. Um. If we could both work on it, we could dash it right out and put it next to the other one. Okay. I'm on it. I should finish more of it here, I guess. Uh, maybe I yeah, let's put another 20 hours into a Rush the Rock that's worth $10 when it's left, when it's done. I gave it 500 for the pair. $10. <laughs> Although, I got, I, I'll, I'll agree with you. It's a better game than the um, F&S, yeah, even it though is. it's older. It is, isn't it? It's, old, it's older, but it's a better game. Yeah. Because of the um, the well, the, the shifting is more realistic. Clutch. And because uh, your because your car incurs damage. Damage, yeah. The other I like ones that. You just sort of bounce. Yeah, I, I I like that. You get you, you, your car gets damaged, it starts to get all squirrely, and then you gotta go into the pits, or you just don't. No, you just drive pits. until you explode, actually. Uh, Which is, yeah, I don't know. It was a rescue from a route location. Where did you get those? Bill, give him back. He's co <laughs> give him back. Hey, he he wants to give me more stuff. Um, that yeah, you got to go along. So you must contribute time and select things. Uh, I have a credit that we probably can get a few things. Maybe we can need. 
Maybe not. Speaking of going along, well, let's let's lay out let's lay out the near future here, right? Let's put an end on this and lay out the near future. Going along, we're going to Nick's. Hello, Nick. We'll see you on Saturday. Looks like Saturday afternoon. Mm -hmm. He's having a little party to celebrate his incoming Arabian Nights pin, and we're going to take a look at. Um, he's got a pair of NBA fast breaks that are linked together. Uh, with the topper, no less, right, Ray? Yes. Apparently, uh, NBA Fast Break was actually had a a feature where you could link the games together and play against. I don't know. Two games can go together. Mm -hmm. That's all two, and um, you play against each other. And there's a time limit to features that they talk back and forth to with each pin, and then. You know, if you get a jump shot, you, then you both compete to get see how many baskets you get on the jump shot, and points get awarded back and forth. It's kind of neat. Well, that's uh, well, we're gonna see that, and uh, Jimmy's coming along. So, uh, in fact, I think uh, Nick said we're gonna have some sort of little tournament over there. So um, that'll be interesting. Uh, you know, I don't know. Um, from what I know of NBA Fast Break, it's a terrible, awful, brutal, garbage game. Um, but um, having a feature where they can be linked together, uh, I don't know. We'll see. Unique. Maybe it'll be fun. Yeah, it's not an A title game. <laughs> it's a it's a F title. <laughs> yeah, um, but at any rate, so that'll be cool. We're gonna go see Nick on Saturday. Um, Sunday is um, the last of the first round of Joe's Pinball Star collection of pins. Um, it, the vid's already done. I just need to publish it. Uh, Cactus Canyon. So uh, tune in on Sunday for Cactus Canyon. Um, that's I, I like the P Rock in that Ray. Um, that upgrade you did to that is extraordinary. That's that was a, pretty involved. Yeah, that's pretty. That turned out really nice. I mean, he handed me this box of stuff, <laughs> and some of the instructions I actually had to call Jim because he had to refer to something on the internet, and I couldn't get internet down there on my yeah. phone. Because they, they left out a few details of the sound card mod. Joe wanted the sound card mod done. He didn't just want to use external PC speakers in a power supply, you know, which is kind of hokey. Okay. Uh, he wanted to use the internal sound card modified. To run, the P Rock runs it. Okay. But you, you, it's not an easy mod uh, if you don't understand what you're doing. So a little bit of a complicated install, but. Not a beginner. But for, for whatever it is, for whatever difficulty you went through putting that in, Ray, it was worth it because that game, it, it really turned out you it's a lot? fantastic. Well, we played it once, but uh, I had a long enough game on it, and he's got this game set on five balls, so. Uh, so yeah, I got got right. to play it enough. Um, got the the drunken multi ball, which was neat. It, it actually flipped the flippers. The left was became the right, and the right became the yeah, left. Jim told me about yeah, that. did that. And there was this cowboys versus aliens mode, which was kind of neat. Um, yeah. So Cactus Canyon on Sunday. Also on Sunday, I don't know if you can't really tune in to eBay, but tune into our eBay store. Because, Ray, I'm making a promise. We're putting up at least 20, maybe 30 listings on Sunday. we got to do that. I've been okay. I've been ignoring eBay, and now eBay is ignoring us. So we got a bunch of junk laying around. So I don't know what we're going to list, but we'll put something interesting on there, a bunch of stuff. Oh, my. I got that times 10. So, uh, so yeah. So uh, go visit our eBay store on Sunday and see what we're putting up. Um, ba -bum. that takes care of Sunday. Next Friday's tech tips. You got any thoughts, Ray? I'm telling you, we're getting thin on the overviews, but uh, if you don't have anything off the top of your head, I'll uh, I'll pull one out. But what do you got in mind? Uh, good answer. Okay, well, um, I got this taxi playfield swap to do. I'm not thrilled about getting into it, but uh. Supposed to. Oh, where's Kevin at? Have you seen Kevin? He's been hiding around here somewhere. Oh, man. I told him I was going to help him with his playfield swap on his Elvira by doing a tech series on the playfield swap. We've got a taxi to do, so maybe we can take that playfield out of its box and do um, section one of I don't know how many sections, but we can start to do an overview of uh, you know where do you start. Okay, that that sounds good. 
I didn't have anything in mind. Uh, okay. Well, I that that sounds good. We can put a dent in that project. That's an advanced hobby function. Yeah. Thing. Well, we're running out of overviews, Ray, and um, so we, you know we got to pick something. Or stop doing this, but but uh, where I I crumpled up his message. I think his name was Joe. And it says we have to post a hundred more of these. Oh yeah, his name was Joe. Yeah. So. A hundred. <laughs> hundred more of these, and you're going to be in a wheelchair. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be in Brazil. <laughs> I'll mail it in. But okay, so. I'll bring my wheelchair. So Sunday Cactus Canyon next Friday tech tips we're going to do uh, introduction into a full playfield swap like I haven't done a few of those. Um, we'll bring that bum, in the bum, uh, bum, we'll bring bum, that in the uh, shop bum, area. Bum. Yeah, and uh, we could even bring the um, pair of you can work on that. I'll help a little bit, and then I can work on the pair of Joker pokers. No. We're not working on the Joker I Pokers. Could, You're working on gun games. I, I could show people how to prepare. A no, no, no. No, no, no. Okay. Um, you well, are. You asked me for an idea. Right? No, no, no. I need you to finish some gun games. Yeah. So we'll get started because I got to. I got to prep the taxi. Um, the taxi cabinet for going. Okay. To, that, well, that that needs to go to paint too. So. Um, that's what the gun looks like right now. Well, go show us the gun, would you? There it is. Yeah. Where's the problem area? Oh my. Yeah. What is what, what is this material? It's not is it not, is it's not cast iron. No. It's cast aluminum. It's cast aluminum. So you'd weld weld it with a MIG with aluminum. Okay. What you would do is grind a V out of the exterior of this and then you would weld it with aluminum. You'd set your MIG on high heat, low wire feed with an aluminum spool. You have MIG? Yeah, I use 35 thousandths aluminum wire. And then I would weld this. I've welded this stuff before. Okay. And then when you're done, you can actually refinish it and it will look like this. Yeah, well, you're going to paint over your work when you're done. Yeah, you'll never see it. Um, well, good luck with that because, uh, oh boy. The MIG is over here. Okay. And That's the aluminum spool I use. 035. Okay. Aluminum. Neat. You know, and I uh, have different. I have different. Uh, this is the uh, the sleeve because when you use aluminum, you don't use the steel sleeve. You use uh, plastic to feed the wire through the uh, welder. And then you use the rubber drive wheel. That job sounds tricky, Ray. I would not attempt it. No, and over here's the welder. This is a 90 amp MIG, and uh, it's a hobby tool. Yeah, that's not an industrial style no. welding equipment. And then you change your uh, your tip, and then your sleeve is inside here, and the sleeve is what the wire feeds through. This is the steel sleeve, you can see it's, mm. and then this is copper, this is your steel wire copper plated steel wire. This is for steel. Okay. This is 030. And then you change your bottle from Stargon to Argon. Argon is for aluminum welding. And then of course I, I do a lot of steel welding so the spool is a lot bigger. I don't do very much uh, aluminum welding. Right, you know a lot of stuff. Okay, well you know I promised to have two of those gun games done and I really want them all four done. I want them out. I want them gone. They're in my shop. I want them gone. You can get two done by Christmas. How about how about all four? I want them gone. I want four of them done and gone. Oh. Want they're in my shop. I want them gone. The gangbusters. I gotta buy bills to complete the last one because it's missing stuff. Good. I saw it. I mean, I didn't see it in our shop because they're wrapped up, but I saw it up at Felix. Okay. So I gotta buy bills, and I think what you call is that. Yeah. All right, you said he did, so. All right, it's a wrap then, and that's what we'll do. Okay, Sunday, Cactus Canyon, Friday, introduction to playfield swaps on a taxi. Taxi. Um, shout out, Ray. Uh, 
I shouted out to about 50 people in this, but I, this is your opportunity. I know who you're going to say hello to and thank. The three names you gave me that I forgot. Steve. 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 Where's Steve from? Steve from New York. Yeah, talk about Steve. Yeah, I like Steve. We were talking for quite a while. He was, he was a neat character. Yeah, he was. He was from like, what? Queens, Bronx? I don't know. Um, New York. He had a lot to say said. about New York. I think he was from Queens, Bronx. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Neat character. Mm -hmm. Nice guy. Um, and... Was it... Jeremy? Jeremy. And his wife? And his wife. Amelia? Amelia. And what, what do you, how do you know them? They were from Gettysburg. We were talking about that. Gettysburg? Yeah. That's pretty far from us. Yeah, it was originally from Atlanta, though. They I mean, it's Atlanta. not terribly far from us, but... Uh, Dude, that's it's 110 miles. How'd you get to meet them folks? 120 miles. Where'd they you? were at the party. Oh, yeah. Maybe. The Halloween pinball party. At so Game Room Collectibles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At your store. Mm -hmm. So, that was cool. Thanks to those th those three folks for coming out to see us. Yeah, I hope they had a good time. You know, it was a long way to go, but I think they had a good time. Yeah, I mean, uh, the party the party was fine, and we had a decent turnout and everything. But uh, fifteen nice pins to play with for um, you know for that kind of distance. We're talking, you know, they uh, both the New York uh, Steve and uh, and Gettysburg couple. Uh, that's a two and a half hour drive both each way yeah. for either of them. To come uh, hang out with us, right? That's, I don't get it, but that's cool. <laughs> we Man. we we appreciate that. Hope they had a good time. Remember them New York trips we did? Uh, yeah, we yeah we yeah, Service but we make the, but we make the trip for we get paid to make the trip. They didn't. They well they they got paid and you know I guess they won a little prize it still and, wasn't. <laughs> and got to eat some chili and and um, yeah. I remember the one time we were up there and we were at Jim's and then we had to go to Mark's. And we didn't get to, didn't get to Mark's till 10, 10.30 at night. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was the night we brought back the Batman yeah. and um, and the Back to the Future. Back to the Future ended up going to Derek and now uh, Utah. It wasn't bad enough. Well, at least that was out. That out, thing was out, a piece out, of out junk. Out I did what I could with it. But we had to take them from basement up at 10 at uh, night. Oh, my. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how we do it, right? I don't know, man. That was much. That was really much. Uh, at least it was on the way out of home, though, you know, from Woodbury to Franklin Square. <laughs> it was the right way. We went the right way. We haven't been to New York in a while, but I, I figure at the end of these gun games, we probably will. And you you we'll, can tell we, we were going across the... You remember that time? Turn, turn you remember that time? We, they may have even been the same time. We were up there and... Um, you had your you had your GPS on car mode or something. Oh my! Yeah. You screwed up. You had your GPS on car mode, and I don't know why. You had a reason for it, but whatever your reason was, it was bad. And um, we got all spun around, and then I thought uh, we were going to get shot. Yeah, where were we? We ended up in the Bronx. Bronx, Harlem, Bronx. I don't know. I was scared. Anyway, you know we were coming back late that one time because we stopped at the rest stop and everything was closed. We had to get bagged the stacks. All the restaurants were closed. It was probably like 3 in the morning, 2.30. Yeah. Okay, Ray. Well, that's all I got for this week. You got anything else you want to say? No, I don't think so. Thanks for watching, and we'll be back with more next week. Okay, we got 100 more coming, Ray. Okay. Thanks, everybody, for subscribing. Please forgive me for my earlier rant about this Google crap. Um, we we do appreciate the subscribers and and uh, we'll do what we can to continue to respond to your comments. We appreciate that. Happy to have you. Happy to answer your questions. And uh, look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks so much. Goodbye, everybody. Hi. We hope you've enjoyed this video. If you haven't already subscribed, what are you waiting for? Want to know what's coming next? Go like us on Facebook, right now. You can keep up to date with all of us here at the shop and what we've been up to. Thank you for watching.